Hello friends, thanks so much for tuning in. We're glad you could join us. I'm really excited to be coming to you with this interview today. Uh, actually, we're at New York University, right here in New York City. And today I have a real special guest with me, somebody who I've been following for a couple of years now. She's doing some amazing things. So I'm very pleased to introduce my special guest, Dr. Wendy Suzuki. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Great I appreciate you taking this time. Sure. So, Dr. Suzuki, we know that um, exercise has immediate powerful benefits to the brain. Yeah. And yeah. we were talking off camera before we started the camera rolling here. And uh, I love the work that you're doing. If you could just, I just want to have you just tell us a little bit about what you're finding. Because yeah. you're doing so much research, so much experimentation and yeah. implementation of exercise. And then looking at how it affects the brain. Yeah, yeah. Enlighten sure. us, please. Sure. <laughs> So we have two basic flavors of studies that we do. Okay. One is looking at the immediate effects of exercise. So uh -huh. what happens when you just go for, to the gym and work out for 45 minutes or an hour? Okay. And um, uh, so we test people on cognitive tests before uh -huh. um, a workout. We give them a workout for, for 45 or 50 minutes, and, and then we test them again afterwards and ask, did that change your brain? Did that workout change your brain? Right. Well, um, our most recent publication showed that just one hour of physical aerobic activity, this would happen to be on an exercise bike, uh -huh. um, cycling to up to 80% of your maximum heart rate. Uh, not for the whole hour, but you, they were trying to get up to that level multiple times during, mm -hmm. during the session. What that did is uh, significantly improved multiple different uh, um, forms of attention. It basically allows you to focus and shift your attention significantly better after this um, single bout of exercise compared to if you, um, our, our control in that uh, situation was um, uh, the control was watching a video. So we actually had them watch an action video. So you watch mm. somebody else jumping around and doing lots of exercise and you're just sitting there watching it. Mm. Compared to that control, um, an hour of exercise is significantly improving your, your prefrontal function. Mm -hmm. Prefrontal mm -hmm. cortex is right behind your forehead. Um, uh, and uh, we also know that in, in a single bout of exercise can significantly improve your mood as well. Yeah, right, right. So, um, so that's one kind of root uh, that's happening. But as we were mentioning, the thing that I think people don't appreciate is the dramatic changes that occur in your brain mm -hmm. as soon as you exercise. We know that there are changes in neurotransmitter levels, growth factor levels, hormone levels. So for example, neurotransmitters that are typically decreased mm -hmm. in depression, in clinical depression. These are neurotransmitters like um, serotonin and noradrenaline mm -hmm. and dopamine. Those actually increase with exercise. Right after you right. exercise, they're, they're increasing right. and cause the mood effects that many of us appreciate and really kind of start to crave uh, with regular workouts. Exactly. Um, the other thing that happens is that there is a burst of uh, a really important growth factor in the brain with exercise. That growth factor is called BDNF, or mm -hmm. brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Mm -hmm. And that is um, doing lots of good things for allowing um, changes to happen, allowing learning to take place. And basically, you want mu as much of that around your brain as possible. We know that exercise is one of the easiest ways to get that kind of flowing in your brain right so this it helps our mood yes. it helps us to maybe have better memory right uh, so you, the, you, the immediate effects uh, for one bout it's mainly effects on attention okay yeah your ability to focus attention the the memory comes with long-term increases long -term. okay very exercise. interesting um, we know it activates a lot of systems exercise exercise activates a lot of systems yes so Let's go back to BDNF. It's something okay. I, I like to talk about, read about, and learn about. Mm -hmm. We were talking, and I've seen you talk about this on some uh, TED Talks. You want to definitely look her up on TED Talks. You have four right now on TED Talks, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, they're all really good. You need to check them out. Um, new brain cells being born. 
as a result of neurotrophic growth factors. Yes. We have a couple areas where this happens. Yes, right? yeah. So in adults, this is something that people don't appreciate. In an adult brain, there's only two areas where brand new brain cells can be born. Okay. One of them is the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. This is a key structure that allows you to form new long-term memories, okay? And right. the second structure is the olfactory bulb, which is critical for your ability to smell and okay. discriminate between different smells. Well, the only thing that we know that can that can enhance the birth of brand new brain cells in the hippocampus even more, it happens normally. You can be a couch potato mm -hmm. and you still have some neuro, new neurons being born in the hippocampus. But the only thing that we know that can up that new neuron birth is physical aerobic exercise. Exercise doesn't help the birth in the olfactory bulb. That's helped by giving um, lots of experiences with lots of different smells. That will help your olfactory bulb, but not your hippocampus. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, you may know that the hippocampus is the target, the major first target of Alzheimer's disease. So this is important for memory. This is why right. early Alzheimer's disease patients have memory impairments. So I'm not saying exercise, and, and we know exercise does not cure Alzheimer's disease, right. but what it does is if you're doing it over a long time, you can build up um, as many brand new hippocampal cells as you can that can kind of basically strengthen your hippocampus as you move into the aging older years. So let me ask you this. It's a multi-part question. Does exercise in relation to Alzheimer's and the birth of brain cells in the hippocampus mm -hmm. Can exercise help to maybe just eliminate the onset of the disease or and or if somebody s shows signs of early onset, you know, or, uh, they have Alzheimer's, yeah. can it slow the progression of the disease? So here's what we know. If you already have signs of dementia, you have memory problems, we know that in that population of people, increased aerobic exercise can help your memory. So that's that's great, great okay. news. Can it can it stop the onset of it? Probably not. This mm -hmm. is there. Are, we're learning more and more about all the different terrible ways that Alzheimer's can be generated. There's ideas about infections. There's there's uh, viruses. Mm -hmm. There's uh, um, uh, um, lots of different theories. And so exercise is not going to cure all right, of those, sure. but it'll strengthen your hippocampus. So it might take longer for what, however that disease starts to start to uh, damage enough of it so you have a behavioral effect. Okay. That is memory loss. Okay, interesting. Um, I would like to talk about your book for just a minute. Okay. Healthy Brain, Happy Life, Amazon, right? You can find yes, it on Amazon. Yes, absolutely. Also, I know if you go to your website, which yeah. is wendysuzuki.com, I'll yes. have a link on the screen, but for listeners on the iTunes version of this, it's wendysuzuki.com, um, Wendy, and then S-U-Z-U-K-I.com. Go there and check out her website. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this book? Yeah, and, sure. Uh, tell us what it's about. So, Healthy Brain, Happy Life is really what I call a science memoir. It's about how I used my understanding of science mm -hmm. to change my life and how um, changing my life ended up changing the way that I did science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very similar to the story that you just told me before we, we started this podcast. You said that... The drummer story? Yeah. Well, the drummer <laughs> story the that... the former life... The former life story being that you were... Being way overweight. Yeah, for those of you who know me, know I was a lot heavier. <laughs> and that you transformed. You you had a wake-up call. You went to the gym. You got a trainer. And you, you transformed. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. look at all the things, all the wonderful things that you're doing for, for fitness. I had a similar yes. um, yeah. situation. Uh, my situation was um, I uh, got this job at New York University and I had to get tenure. And I just <laughs> put everything into getting tenure. I did nothing but work in the lab. I went from my uh, lab to my apartment that happened to be three blocks away at the time, back to the lab, I ate takeout. I, I only worked because I thought that was the only way to get tenure. Mm -hmm. And um, I woke up one day and actually my wake up call was, I went on vacation and I got away from New York. Once a year I would go on vacation and I went on a river rafting trip mm. to Peru. Mm. And it was so much fun and um, lots of great people. Until the day, very early on in the trip, I looked around and I realized I am the physically weakest person mm. on this entire trip. I was in my 30s and there were 16 year old girls on that trip that were stronger than me and 65 plus year old guys on that trip that were way stronger than me mm -hmm. and 
you know, I'm okay being the weakest person on the trip, but I didn't want to feel like the weakest person on the trip. And I gotcha. felt like the weakest person. So I came back to New York. I got a trainer, mm -hmm. went to the gym. And, um, but I was dealing with all these other, other issues. I worked all the time, lots of stress. I had no friends mm -hmm. outside of the lab because I only, you know, right. worked in the lab. And, um, as I describe in one of my TED Talks, I realized now that going to the gym was really kind of a, a life, uh, a life paradigm shift for me in sure. multiple ways. It got me out of the lab. So mm -hmm. I actually met gym going people and mm -hmm. I kind of made new friends that way so that helped with the social aspect. It helped with the stress and the mood because that first workout, you feel good after the workout. You feel yeah. more empowered. No doubt. A little bit sore, but but still I, I could I mm -hmm. could tell that this was really going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. But then what I describe in detail is um, this didn't take just, you know, a couple of weeks, but a year, year and a half into getting into real regular, because it takes a while, as you know, you can't sure. just suddenly go from, you know, not working out to a regular. long process, year and a half, but I, I was really dedicated. I loved it. I, lo I had a great trainer, had great classes to go to. And I remember I was sitting at my desk writing a grant, as I often am, <laughs> am and um, that day was very unique because I said to myself, well, writing is going well today and writing never goes well and and I thought I wonder why my might, might be having a good day I don't know maybe I'm just lucky today and I started to link it to the fact that the one thing big thing in my life that has changed recently because I had been writing grants for years mm -hmm. uh, by then was the regular exercise. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me go back to the science literature and ask, what do we know about the effects of exercise on the brain? And then lo and behold, oh my God, of course I'm, I'm feeling better. What I noticed is that I was able to, because when you write, you have to focus your attention. Sure. My attention was deeper and longer at that point when I was doing, um, you know, when I had increased my exercise noticeably. And I also have a hundred papers usually spread out all over my desk and trying to come up with this, you know, uh, um, wonderful science argument for why they should fund these studies. And my memory for all those details and all of those hundreds of papers that I'm going over was better as well. Mm. And that's what gave me my theme. Can I figure out why that is? Mm -hmm. What is happening in my body? What are the pathways? What are the molecules that are changing that, um, um, first of all, you can't do a study in yourself. So self <laughs> self observation is great, mm -hmm. but that's not a statistically significant study. Mm -hmm. That created the hypothesis that I went on to examine. How is exercise and how much is exercise improving your mood, your memory, and your attention? How do you get it? How, how, how long does it take to get it significant? And what are those molecules um, and pathways that the body uses to go from increased movement in your kind of peripheral body to improved function up here? Mm -hmm. And that, in a nutshell, is the theme of my lab now. At the time, I, I was studying memory, kind of the, the physiology of memory. Mm -hmm. But because of all of these observations, I ended up... Um, both changing my life, that's kind of the memoir right, part of right. it, but mm -hmm. also completely changing the research focus of my entire lab here at NYU. Well, it, it, there was a point where you went out and um, became certified in something, right? Yes, and you yes. actually started leading an hour of work, a workout before the class? Yes, yeah. So Are I, you still doing that? I am, I am. So um, I uh, that the whole kind of shift of research started when... Um, uh, I started noticing these things and, and I wanted to learn more about the literature and as a professor of neuroscience I know that the best way to learn a new topic is to teach a class on it. Force mm -hmm. yourself to teach a class and teach right. the students. Best way to learn is to teach. So I, it was going to be a, a standard kind of elective class where I would go over all the animal studies on the effects of exercise and the human clinical studies. But then I thought well um, the whole class was inspired by me going to the gym and mm -hmm. exercising and noticing these brain changes. Wouldn't it be fun if I could bring exercise into the classroom and get students to exercise? Right. And so um, I said, great. And I, I went to the administration. I said, I had this great idea. I want to hire an exercise instructor and we'll do an hour of exercise together and, and then I'll teach the class and it'll be kind of a, a novel thing to do. And they said, 
well, we pay you to teach the class. There's no extra money to pay an exercise instructor. And so I went, okay. And I, I did the next most obvious thing. I said, well, what if I go out and get certified to become an exercise instructor? Mm -hmm. um, and I could teach the class. Mm -hmm. And they said, that's okay. That's great. And because you're doing it for the class, we're going to pay for your teacher training. Oh, so NYU nice. paid for my teacher training. I went out. Great. I did five days of teacher training to teach this class that I teach, which is called Intensati, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, developed by a wonderful fitness and tra trainer here in New York City, Patricia Moreno. And it's unique because it pairs positive spoken affirmations yeah. with physical movements from kickbox, dance, yoga, and martial arts. So, um, but, but because of all the speaking and the coordination, uh, five days of training, even though I was a, a, um, a devoted student of the class, wasn't enough. And I ended up training for six months before I actually stepped in front of my first students. And um, it, was, it was an amazing class because I, I think for the first time, I haven't seen any other academic class that kind of incorporates exercise like this. I haven't either. I travel a lot. And I, I mean, universities a lot. I haven't. Yeah. So I wanted to actually bring that out today in the yes. interview because I knew about it. And I think that's really cool that she's doing. She went out and got certified in this and leads one hour of workout. Yeah. And then you do the class yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. It was great. It transformed my classroom mm -hmm. um, because... Uh, there's nothing like sweating with your professor to kind of break down barriers and um, you know it's a playful kind of class you're shouting out positive affirmations and and I can be a benevolent um, drill instructor drill sergeant uh, yeah. and and kind of and playfully bring that over to the academic side and say okay what is the answer to that question what do you think yeah well the other thing too is um, it just seems like it would be fun Right? Yes, People have, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure the response is probably very good. Yes, it's People very good. People look forward to it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's uh, I've never heard of it before, so bravo to you on that. I think <laughs> it's you. a great move. Um, so... We're going to talk about this book again. Just remind right. people about the book, okay? Healthy Brain, Happy Life. You need to check this out. And I think maybe as we start to wind down here and close uh, towards closing out, I have two questions yeah um, basically what would be maybe even one question what would be your main takeaway for anybody watching anybody listening uh, the primary message that you'd like to share with them yeah yeah my primary message is that physical aerobic exercise can really be transformative for your brain and for your life and um, uh, it is doing so many positive things, and it does it immediately. And the best way to notice that is um, just notice the effect on your mood of going to work out. And the corollary of that kind of take-home message is you don't have to be a triathlete to take advantage of this. Start small. <laughs> start, uh, start with something fun. That's what I always tell people. This is how I got into exercise. Um, I had a trainer that I loved. I found this class that I mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. loved. Um, but everybody's different. You may love being outside. Find things that you can, physical things you can do outside. Find friends that are already working out that you can join. Um, and make it fun, make it short at first, but just get yourself moving. And um, I can tell you, and if you read this book, there are so many, um, I, I give what I call brain hacks at the end of every chapter, <laughs> uh, which are um, quick ways that you could implement and start to bring into your life the things that I talk about in the chapters, like exercise, like meditation, like altruism. So there's a lot of great tips that you can get um, in the book. Oh, that's so powerful. Yeah, because, well, one thing uh, I teach when I travel around is uh, to trainers is exactly what you said. If your clients don't find something or if you don't find something you like to do, you're probably not going to do it, yeah, number absolutely. one. So you don't reap the benefits. It doesn't have to take forever. You don't have to go crazy for an hour a day every single day um, or five hours a day every single day. <laughs> and, you know, it's more than a lot of people, I think, get confused. They don't realize the benefits, which is one of the another reason I appreciate you sharing so much here is because it's not just about weight loss or toning up or whatever it is. There are health benefits. There are 
brain benefits. Yeah. There's so many benefits that go far beyond just your physical appearance, your mood. Mm-hmm. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah. And Stress, I think people, one of the things that uh, I certainly benefited from is the ability of exercise to protect your brain from the debilitating effects of stress. Mm. Everybody these days, uh, we're, 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 you know, we're stressed out about everything. There's so much tension and, and um, chronic stress is terrible, terrible for your brain. And it's terrible for those two brain areas that I mentioned before, mm. the hippocampus, hippocampus and the prefrontal yeah. cortex. Exercise protects your brain from that. Yeah, yeah. One more thing I just yeah. I just remembered. So there's a course, right? There's yes. a course online. Yes. So if we go to... Yeah. If you go to wendysuzuki.com, mm-hmm. uh, there's a pop-up, and you can um, uh, sign up to take a free online course that was developed based on this book. I did all the videos for it. It's fantastic. They, they really did an amazing job. So it's another way that you can um, uh, enjoy, reap the benefits of all the information in the book. And this is for free. Brain hacks. I love it. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been great. I Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's really a pleasure to have you, you on my show, talking to my viewers and listeners. And um, I know they love this stuff, especially when we get into this brainy stuff. I, I love it. So... Um, Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Suzuki. Thank you. We'll be coming back at you with more interviews real soon. Have a great day.